This episode of Techzilla is brought to you by Netflix. Is your PC ready for Battlefield 3, the beta for one of the biggest games of the year? Battlefield 3 is out. And after spending last week locked in a dark room, my partner in This Week in Computer Hardware, Ryan Shrout, just finished up PCPer.com's Battlefield 3 System Build Guide, a.k.a. the guide to what you need to not get snuffed playing Battlefield 3. Welcome back to Techzilla, Ryan. Hi, how are you? I'm good, man. Are you over this game yet? You literally, how many hours did you spend testing this last week? You know, I don't know. If I go to the uh, actual Battlefield battle log, I could probably tell you exactly how many hours I've played. It was a lot. It was a lot. Um, and I'd be lying if I said it was all testing. But there was a lot of testing in there. Uh, but, uh, you know, you, you just spent, like, overnight, you, or, or you, you, you downloaded Rage. Are you already sort of, like, moving beyond Battlefield to Rage? Or, or, or will you be playing Battlefield at all this week? Um, so that'll, that'll depend on how good Rage turns out to be, I guess. I uh, haven't had any time really with Rage before the launch that happens tonight at midnight. So uh, it's, it'll, it'll be interesting to see how that goes from a, from a website perspective and a performance testing perspective from now through basically Christmas. You know, each PC game release that, that's lined up is going gonna, is gonna to take up a lot of time. <laughs> it's a high class problem. We should talk <laughs> about Battlefield 3, minimum specs kind of work. Uh, what are the yeah, recommended specs? Kind of. <laughs> so re the recommended specifications, I think, are more important than the minimums. Minimums go all the way back to the Radeon 3000 series and the GeForce 8000, 8800 GT, those types of cars. Re recommended system specs are Windows 7, 64-bit, a quad-core CPU, 4 gigs of memory, and then for your graphics car, which is probably the most important part, is either a GeForce GTX 560 or an ATI Radeon 6950. So this is this is not this isn't crisis, but this is pretty taxing on 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 your system. What's going on here? It's I mean it, they they spent a lot of time improving textures, improving shader quality. They're using a lot of post processing anti aliasing for the first time as well. That uses a lot of GPU horsepower. You know they they really kind of set the bar very high for themselves in terms of just in, in what the quality of the game will look like. And then you notice in the recommended specs. Uh, and if you look at all the different quality settings, low through ultra, they kind of set the bar pretty high, saying, we don't want our game to look any worse than this. And mm -hmm. if you don't have that type of hardware, then you're just going to have to deal with it. <laughs> so, I mean, what, what, would, what do you feel at this point if you're going to buy the game? What would you want for your minimum uh, CPU and GPU? For, for your processor, I think we can be pretty flexible here. Anything that's a quad-core processor is going to be able to handle it. Uh, you know, they're recommending a, a quad-core, but they don't specify anything in terms of frequency other than that. That lets you know that the game is multi-threaded capable, and in our testing, we haven't done a whole lot of CPU testing, but I disabled and enabled cores and hyper-threading and that kind of stuff. And it does seem to use three to four threads of processing relatively modestly. My Nehalem processor never really went above 40 frames or 40 percent CPU utilization, and that was even running fraps for performance testing and that kind of stuff. So I think if you have any kind of Athlon, Phenom, Sandy Bridge, Linfield quad core processor, you should be fine on the CPU front. So, uh, but you will be feeling pain if you try to do it on a dual core processor. I would say you could probably get away with it. Mm -hmm. We've had a lot of commenters and, and forum members kind of talking about that. They have dual core processors, and it does work. You, you can do it, and, and I think you might be bottlenecked a little bit more at the lower resolutions than you would be at the higher resolution. And so at that point, it all kind of depends on what image quality settings you're actually using. This seems to be a, a game that's much more intense on the GPU side of things than the CPU. It is, definitely. Uh, you know. In our, in our little review that we did, our article, kind of a system build guide for Battlefield 3, we kind of laid it out in three different tiers of, of image quality. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we targeted at if you're a user that wants to do, you're okay with medium quality settings, you're okay with 1680 by 1050 resolution, maybe that's the native resolution of your screen as it is. You know, we, we recommend like a GTX 560 or a Radeon 6870 or above, which kind of fits in with those recommended settings from mm -hmm. EA and from DICE in the game. If you want to do high-res gaming, like at 1080p, uh, at high-quality settings, you go up to us recommending the top-end single GPU from either NVIDIA or AMD, the GTX 580 or the Radeon 6970. Uh, and then if you go even above that, if you have a 30-inch panel, if you have 2560 by 1600 resolution, or if you're doing uh, like triple monitor gaming, this game will support three displays and Ifinity or NVIDIA surround, which is really nice. But then you get into really high costs for the <laughs> GPU. You're going to need two 580s 
or two 6970s, which are going to cost you about a thousand bucks for the graphics cards. It's a game that that this just it, it commitment here. If you want to if you want a game at high resolutions, it's but it's not like it doesn't seem to be like Crisis though, where it's just like they started throwing you know trauma to your GPU just because they could. No, I, I think I think they're actually we we actually were able to play it on low quality settings with a 9800 GT, and you could play it, and it was passable, and you had decent frame rates. Uh, so if you don't want to upgrade, you might still be able to get away with playing the game. It's going to be a pretty different experience than if you have like a GTX 560 or a Radeon 6000 series card or higher. It's 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 definitely the most taxing game we've seen on the PC in quite some time. You know, we we kind of complained that Crisis 2 didn't really push. Graphics 4 didn't really push GPU technology forward. And this, this definitely does. I mean, our goals were 60 frames per second mm -hmm. at these resolutions and quality sec settings. And the GTX 580 kind of just barely being able to get by at 1080p high quality settings. That's what AMD and NVIDIA love to see, right? They want to see right. what's going to force you guys to, to buy more graphics cards. <laughs> Desperate need for better GPUs. So obviously, Rage, is that going to be the number one occupation over at PCPro.com this week? Yep, no, uh, we're going to start testing on that tonight, and uh, you do the same type of uh, performance analysis mm -hmm. that we have for this. I, my initial impressions are that RAGE is not going to be as GPU intense as uh, it's going to be CPU and memory intense, which will be kind of interesting. It'll be a first time for something like that hmm. in a long time in the gaming world, uh, but we'll have to see later on that. But yeah, that's definitely going to be the focus at uh, PC Perspective for probably the next week or so. Ryan Trout, ladies and gentlemen, you can find more Ryan at PCPer.com, the PC Per podcast, and with me hosting this week in computer hardware. Very, very good information from this man. Go check it out. Netflix. With more than 23 million members, Netflix is the world's largest subscription service, instantly streaming TV episodes and movies. Members can instantly watch thousands of TV and movie titles on a vast array of devices, like Microsoft's Xbox 360, Sony's PS3 game console, and the Nintendo Wii console. As a Netflix Unlimited member, you can instantly watch as many movies as you want anytime you want for just one low monthly price. There are no late fees or due dates. For a limited time and as a new member and a Texilla viewer, you can get a free 30-day trial membership. Go to Netflix.com slash Texilla and sign up and be sure to use this URL so they know we sent you.